made him disappear as well. We'd better hide George. Does he disappear? Open up! Quick, put him in the kitchen. I'm coming. Oh, at last. Sorry if we were a long time. What do you want? Some information received. Suggests there might be a wild. We don't know anything about it. What? The cat. What cat? Not today, thank you. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Uh, I'm afraid I didn't see you. Why does everybody think I'm Mrs. Err? She's the teacher at school. Oh, I do apologise, madam. Um, I'm here to investigate the reported disappearance. I of... don't know anything about any coffee tables. Oh. Uh, neither do I. Uh, no, I've come in search. And I never go anywhere near museums. I beg your pardon, sir? Jimmy's got a cold. His voice has gone all squeaky. You're Jimmy. And you're... Simon. So, correct me if I'm wrong. You are! But... What? Wrong. I haven't got one. What? A gorilla. Ah, now then. That's what I came about. But he does have a giraffe. Oh, thanks! Her ladyship seems to think a gorilla was on the rampage. Good heavens, a gorilla! Oh, oh well, never. <laughs> well, I do know it sounds a bit unlikely, uh, but her ladyship was convinced her nephew was one of its victims. But I'm Lady Fogg's Custard's nephew. Are you? Oh, well, well, you look all right to me. Are you going to take me home, then? Uh, I suppose so. Come on. Wait a minute. Did you hear anything just then? No, no I I'm never honest. honest. Thought not. Come on, I feel we worried. Just think, if the police had seen George with that sawdust on him, it would have been proof of his guilt. Why? What's proof? It would be like finding a sticker on him saying Victoria and Albert Museum. It would show he'd been there. It would mean he was guilty, and he couldn't say he wasn't. I see. So that's what proof is. Oh, do you like your giraffe? Yes, thanks. It's great. <laughs> I'll be able to sell it at the jumble sale now. Getting them back and adjusting their Oh. Those people to do just that. What are you making? An egg cosy. A brontosaurus egg cosy. A what? <laughs> Brontosauruses are extinct. That's what you think. Good, Sally. Now, I want you to start packing the animals ready to take to Haughty Hall. I don't want her packing my giraffe. She broke it last time. No, I didn't. You did? I know you did. Yes, God, then you did. prove yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, don't yeah, need yeah, proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just said because you haven't yeah, got any. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's well. enough. Simon, it's very wrong of you to blame anyone without proof. Sally's quite right. Yes, all right, Sally. You see, in this country, it's the law that everyone, and I mean everyone, is innocent until proven guilty. So until or unless you can find some proof that it really was Sally who broke your giraffe... They'll never do that, miss, because I didn't break it! We'll just have to assume that she's innocent. After all, it could have been anyone now, couldn't it? Now, as we've learnt really good manners from Cuthbert's example, we must remember to put them into practice when we're at Haughty Hall. Mm. I shall be watching you to see how you all behave. It's very kind of Lady Folks Custard to let us hold the jumble sale there. Because her house is full of beautiful antique things. And we'd better make absolutely certain that none of them get broken. Now, hadn't we? Toad in the hole and dog in a blanket. Fly cake. Oh, custard. Oh, you're too pretty. <laughs> Proof.
is one of the most beautiful glade possible imagined, which is simply a sea of bluebells. I've got to get these out to the hall tonight. The bluebells. What's for tea? Tea? Oh dear, I've forgotten all about tea. I am sorry. Never mind, Mum. And I'm reliably informed. Will you buy my giraffe at the jumble sale tomorrow? Of course, love. Do you want chips with it? For the oxfords. No, Hopkins, I said over there. Begging your pardon, ma'am, I thought this was over there. Well, how can it be there if you're there? It must be here. Oh, I see, ma'am. You mean over there. No, there. Here, there. Oh, really? Who's that? Hopkins? Permit me, madam. Oh, it's Mrs. Uh, put them down there, Hopkins. Where, ma'am? Take them to the kitchen, Hopkins. Oh, for goodness sake, Hopkins! Get out of my sight! What's this? Comics? Those awful children that you're mixing with at that school. If you'd seen the way he came home the other day from school, covered in mud from head to foot, I don't know how their mothers can allow them to, to behave in such a, such a reprehensible manner. Oh, uh, I, I, I am so sorry, Mrs. Uh, uh, do sit down. It's so sweet of you to have bought your little offering for the sale tomorrow. Little? I must say, I am quite exhausted. Such a lot to prepare, and you know what servants are these days. Now, where shall I put these? Uh, oh, I see you're admiring my vase. It is rather lovely, isn't it? Royal Dalton, of course. Ghastly price, but well worth it. <laughs> well, I expect you'll be wanting to run along, Mrs. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, we still have so much to do. Ta? What did you say, Cuthbert? Ta, Auntie. Ta? Where did you learn language like that? From Hopkins, Auntie. Hopkins? Hopkins? Don't start talking like a gutter snipe. You should say, Hopkins! You called, Mom? No! Yes! Show the lady out! I think I have a migraine coming on! Pretty pee, please. I saw you. Come on, cough up. Here, I'll pay for him. Cool, thanks. That's not fair. If everyone. Oh, Bill! If your aunt hears you've been talking like that, it'll be because you're a telltale tit. Of course, Vicar. Royal Dalton is in the connections of all the nobility. But this, I grant you, is a particularly fine example. Oh, Vicar, and, uh, have you seen the papier mache animals? Some of them are really quite amazing. Look at this one. It was run over to pay when we've done nearly all the work. What work? You mean all those sweets you never made in your factory? What factory? I never knew your dad had a factory. He means his back kitchen. <laughs> Twenty pounds. Why does she have to make me feel so small? Don't worry, she makes me feel like that too. Honest? Hopkins? Yes, sir? Kai, called you sir. Go on, Hopkins, ask him if he'd like some fruit punch. Would you like a little fruit punch, sir? Sure, sir. Me? Entrance fee, please. Cross my palm with silver, little lady, and I'll tell you your future. It was nice. No, not very. Then, then I don't think I want to know. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, this giraffe vicar is really quite exceptional, don't you think? And very cheap for only 50 pence. Would you like to buy a bag of my fancies, headmaster? Fancies? Oh, cakes. Very nice, very nice. Hmm, very nice. Ah, but there's the mayor arriving. Mum, come quick. The vicar wants to buy my giraffe. Yes, but I'm hurry. I'm very well. How are you, dear? 
<laughs> ah, Bodley! <laughs> Great success by the looks of it. Should make a lot for the old folks. Mini bus not out of the question. <laughs> Where did you get that? Ah, follow me. <laughs> Here we are. Oh. <laughs> Mm. 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 Five p each, please. Mm. Mm. You have, Mr. Bodley. No, ah, I, I wonder what's going on over here. Oh, what fun! A gypsy telling fortunes. Oh, good afternoon, your worship. Your uh, worship. Good afternoon, your battleship. <laughs> Go on, Bodley. Have your fortune told oh, me a sport? Very well, if, if, if you insist, your worship. <laughs> Oh, it's all very misty. Ah, there's a man coming out of the mist. Ah, yes, it's you. He's very, very lonely. Nobody seems to like him. That's probably because he's unkind to children and old ladies. Oh, no, I say. Oh, yes, yeah. but there is someone, someone who cares. A lady, young, not pretty. She looks sad, too. That's probably because she loves you. There are a lot of children about her. Oh, you two lonely hearts should get together. Ha! Huh? Do I hear the sound of wedding bells? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Oh. Uh, is that enough? Oh. <laughs> Come and hear oh, what's going to happen to you. Oh. Control yourself, Miss Beeble. Young lady. Me? Young? My crystal ball is showing love, love, man, shy. Too shy to tell you, though he sees you every day. You have to be kind to him. Because he's truly soppy about you. <laughs> now, come along, everybody. Remember, it's in a good cause. Everything's got to go. Now, come and hear what fortune has in store for you, your highness. <coughs> oh, me? Oh, do tell. Oh. That's rather nice. Uh, is it for sale? I expect so. She said everything's got to go. Hmm. How much is it? Everything's ten pounds, on the white telephone. Oh, jolly good. <laughs> well... All in a good cause, eh? <laughs> if you're right, you'll have earned this. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Sally, have you seen Mr. Bodley? Yes. He's over there. Oh, dear. It must be true. My vase! What's happened to my vase? I sold it for 10 pay. You what? That vase was priceless! Priceless! Oh, Sally, how could you? <laughs> it was all her fault. She said my future wasn't very nice, and she was right! Hopkins! I need a glass of something. At once, Mom. <gasps> oh, thank you, Hopkins. 